I'm Felice Frankel, and I am a photographer of science. I also help researchers think about how to depict data and concepts, and I have a blast. George Whitesides is a chemist at Harvard with whom I've been working for, oh my God, I can't believe it, it's about 20 years now. Our book, No Small Matter, is about the nanoscale, and it is very, very difficult frankly impossible <laughs> to portray what is going on scientifically at that very, very small scale. So most of the pictures in the book are metaphor. That is, there are images that are somewhat recognizable that George then was able to connect with the phenomena that's going on down at the nanoscale. It's really the idea to get someone to look at it and say, what in the world am I looking at? To read it and then say, oh yeah, I get it now. George wanted an image of a water drop because in fact, a drop of water is about nanoscience. If you think about it, that drop has a sort of a molecular skin and maintains an integrity up to a point. This is literally a drop that's about one millimeter wide hanging from the tip of a syringe. Because I'm using a macro lens that gets very, very close to the subject, the background becomes out of focus. But look closely and you'll see in the drop a pattern of square colors. Two years ago, when I was in a craft store, I saw this grid of colored pastels that were very beautiful, and I knew someday I was going to use it somewhere. The drop is actually focusing the background. It's acting like a lens. In fact, if you turn the picture upside down and you look carefully at the drop, you'll see a reflection of my room. George and I wanted to show how e-paper works. You have, a, on the surface, hundreds and hundreds of balls that are micron level, very small balls. Half of each ball has white color. The other half has black color. When a circuitry is, ele electronics is addressed to the paper, the ball goes up or down. So when you see a letter on your ebook, you're actually seeing little spheres that are going up and down depending upon what the electronics are telling it to do. This was a sentence that we had E Ink, that's the company who makes this paper, we had them write, Call Me Ishmael. We wanted to give some sort of information about the change from analog to digital, because that's all about bits, and bits are about electrons on a nanoscale. So I took an old, I have a whole series of Beatles albums, and uh, we want, both George and I love Eleanor Rigby, and I put it under a microscope, and it was very hard getting to that particular groove. The colors are due to the technique that is emphasizing surface structure. So the microscope does that if you adjust a particular wheel on it. So you're seeing the tracks that the needle eventually does pick up, playing Eleanor Rigby. We try to show how we, quote, see things that are not seeable optically with our eyes. In nanoscience, there are a number of instruments that are used. There is an AFM tip, and we get images that are called atomic force micrographs. This is a picture of the tip, which I made with a scanning electron microscope. The tip itself is so small, you can't use light. The dimensions are smaller than the wavelength of light. AFM tips are used to sense structures that are on the nanoscale. You really can't see atoms. So what you do is you sense the presence of the atom, and then you visualize it through a computer. 
you know, you're seeing it, but you're not seeing it in a way. You're feeling it. And then on the next page, you see what we 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 think is. I think it's a workable metaphor. You know those um, those pin art toys when you put your hand or your face under hundreds of pins. It reads the form like your face or your hand, and it's a sort of a metaphor of how an AFM tip works. It literally feels and that's the way it sees. One of George's suggestions was to include some image of bacteria. This particular bacteria is B. subtilis, which is found all over, and it's growing in a Petri dish. I just put it on um, a certain background and put that background on another background. And you know, compositionally, I think it works. B. subtilis and some other yeast also occasionally They grow in certain morphologies that are unbelievably stunning. And they're trying to figure out why. Sometimes they have no idea. We knew that somewhere we had to talk about light. How do we show that? And so we started thinking about breaking up light into diffraction. And I got this prism, took a gazillion pictures, and I knew that I just didn't want to have that typical shot of the spectrum being broken up. So I just kept walking around my studio and my house, and there it was one day after months. I, it just, I just happened to be walking around with the prism in front of my Venetian blinds, and that's when I saw these beautiful stripes of color. What is going on is that the light coming in from the background in the Venetian blind is breaking up into the spectrum. It just happens to be in stripes. I think it's neat. I'm sort of a visual ambassador in the sense that I'm using a language that is the pictorial language to get people to be less intimidated about what is going on in the laboratories. Photographing science is definitely about showing evidence, but the photography itself The process is sort of a metaphor for the discovery in science. I mean, most of the stuff, you come to the assignment and you think you have a way of, you're going to do it, and then you don't do it that way. You discover another way to do it. And in the process, you see things. Isn't that fun?